Hello again, glad you're still with me. Today we're going to learn how to find what are called two string kites, which are X chains of exactly three links and have a very definite and easily identifiable shape. In the last video, video number 14, we learned about turbo fish, which are also X chains of exactly three links. The beginning of that tutorial contains some basic info on AICs and specifically X chains that will apply equally well to today's lesson. So if you haven't watched that tutorial, please go back and watch it now, which will save me from having to repeat those first several paragraphs. Okay? Thanks. Videos 14, 15, and 16 are like three siblings, and you need to look at them as a group. They are three different ways of looking at the same thing, and thus they should all be studied collectively. Okay, let's go over to the puzzle board and see what a two-string kite looks like. A two-string kite is an X chain of three links, strong, weak, strong, using the same digit candidate throughout. It is composed of two conjugate pairs with one in a row and one in a column. The two conjugate pairs will connect within a block via a weak link. This creates an effective strong link between the two endpoints, which means at least one of those endpoints must be true. Thus, any same digit candidate that can see both endpoints of the chain must be false. And with any two string kite, at most, there will be only one candidate elimination. All right, let's see what this looks like on the grid. Now remember, these hand-drawn diagrams are not real puzzles. They are not meant to be solved or critically analyzed. They are for demonstration purposes only, so please try to focus only on the particular point that I am trying to make, okay? Great. Here we have an AIC or an X chain of three links starting here on this candidate seven in row two, column three. There is a strong link down to this seven in row nine, column three, and then a weak link across the block over to this seven, and then a strong link over to this seven in row seven, column seven. Strong, weak, strong. And remember, because the chain is strong, weak, strong, you can start on either end and the net result is exactly the same, like a mirror image. So let's mark the endpoints of the chain, here and here. The two strong links are in column three and in row seven, and the weak link, the middle link, lies entirely within block seven. Notice what this looks like. As we know, there is an effective strong link between the two endpoints, which means at least one of them must be true. If A is false, then B is true, which further means that we can eliminate any same digit candidate that can see both endpoints of the chain. So here, the candidate seven in row two, column seven, must be false because it can see both of the endpoints. So it can be eliminated like that. But for now, let's put that candidate back in there. Now let's draw the chain so you can see it. We have strong, weak, strong. This configuration is simply an X chain or a turbo fish, but when it takes on this specific shape, it is commonly referred to as a two string kite. This is because the outline of this pattern can be seen as a kite shape, like this. Even though this kite shape is exactly the same as the fish shape that a turbo fish often takes, thinking of it in this way as a kite will help you identify it. In a two-string kite, the two conjugate pairs will always connect within a block, so the tail of the kite will always be restricted to that block. This is the tail, down here in block seven. 
and the elimination cell will always be at the tip of the body of the kite, i.e. the opposite end from the tail up here in row two, column seven. And the two conjugate pairs are the two strings, if you will. This is where the name comes from. The two weakly linked candidates in the block will always be on a diagonal, as you see here. They can never be in the same row or the same column, otherwise the two strong links would be negated and the pattern would not work, like this. If this seven down here in row nine were up here instead, then there would be three sevens in row seven and that would not be a strong link, okay? And likewise, if this seven over here in column one was over here in column three, then there would be three sevens in column three and that would not be a strong link. So the two weakly linked candidates will always be on a diagonal in a two string kite, okay? Now, whenever there are two cells that are not in the same chute like this, there can only be two other cells in the whole puzzle that can see both of them. One will be in the same row as the first one and the same column as the second one, and the other will be in the same column as the first one and the same row as the second one, like this. These two blue cells can see the two yellow cells. The top blue cell is in the same row with the top yellow cell and it's in the same column with the bottom yellow cell. And the bottom blue cell is in the same column as the top yellow cell and it's in the same row as the bottom yellow cell. And those four cells will always form a rectangle or a square. But in a two string kite, one of the two cells that can see both the endpoints will always be in the block with the weak link or the tail of the kite. Like right here in this diagram, this cell can see both of the endpoints. But if there were a candidate seven in there, it would negate both strong links and it would ruin this pattern. And thus there would not be a two string kite there at all. It could not exist. This means that with a two string kite, there can only ever be just one candidate elimination, capiche? And there may not be any. As with any pattern, you may find it only to realize that there are no eliminations to be made and you just have to accept that and move on to something else. If you recall from videos number three and number four, our usual coloring system is that from blue to yellow denotes a strong link and from yellow to blue denotes a weak link as we earlier applied to this first diagram. But please note that for two string kites and skyscrapers, we are going to deviate from this system slightly because I think it will be easier for you to understand these two patterns by coloring them like this. We will still mark the strong links as blue to yellow as usual, but we're going to start from the middle of the chain and move outwards out of the house containing the two weakly linked candidates toward the two strongly linked endpoint candidates like this. So we'll color the two strongly linked endpoint candidates yellow and the two weakly linked candidates in between blue. I think this makes more sense, but only for two string kites and skyscrapers. When we go back to talking about other chains and loops, we will revert to alternating the colors blue, yellow, blue, yellow throughout the chain, okay? So let's draw the links. There's a strong link, and there is a strong link. And those two strong links are connected by a diagonal in this block with that green arrow. And that forms your two string kite. All right, so let's examine a couple of the ways a two string kite can take shape. And then we'll go through several examples in some real puzzles.
Okay, here in this diagram on candidate one, we've got a strong link that begins here and ends there, column three. And then we have another strong link that's in row six, and it goes from there to there. So there are your two endpoints. The two yellow colored ones are the endpoints. So let's mark those. Those are the endpoints, which means the elimination cell is going to be right there. So that candidate one is false and you can eliminate it. So we'll put it back in there. And now let's draw the chain so you can see it. Okay, you've got a strong link there and you've got a strong link over here. And then your diagonal is that weak link right there. So this is a little bit different shape than the last one, but this still works and this is still a two string kite. There are your two strings. The two blue arrows are the two strings. The two yellow ones are the endpoints. And the candidate one in row one, column six, can be eliminated as false because it can see both endpoints. We have strong, weak, strong. Now, some people might argue that this configuration or shape should be called a turbo fish and not a two string kite, and that the term two string kite should be reserved for when the two conjugate pairs actually crisscross in the connecting block like in the last example, like this. But really, as long as the two weakly linked candidates lie in the same block, you can still call it a two-string kite. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you what you want to call it. Turbo fish, two-string kite, or simply an X chain. The most important thing is that you see it one way or the other and make the candidate elimination. All right, in this diagram on candidate six, we have a strong link from this six to that one. And we have a strong link from this one to that one. There are your two endpoints in yellow and the weakly linked candidates are in the same block, those two blue sixes. And so that means our elimination cell is going to be right here. And let's color the two endpoints of our chain and then draw the two string kite. So we've got a strong link here, and we've got a strong link here, and they are connected by a diagonal weak link in block eight. Everybody see that? Okay, so that's a two string kite. So let's take a look at some real examples and some real puzzles. All right, in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate five. We'll light them up. And we're going to use blue to yellow will be a strong link. And the weak link will be from blue to blue. And the endpoints will be in yellow. And the elimination candidate will be in red. Okay, so we have a strong link in column five that goes from here to here. And we've got another strong link coming out of that same block that goes from here to here. So there are the two endpoints. And here is the candidate we can eliminate. That five in row three, column two, can see both of those endpoints, both of those yellow fives. All right, so now let's draw the chain. We've got one strong link there. We've got another strong link there. And there is your weak link between them. So there's your two string kite. You can call that an X chain, a turbo fish, or in this case, a two string kite. They're really all three different versions of the same thing. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, here, let's take a look at candidate four. And we've got a strong link in column eight that goes from there to there. And we've got another strong link coming out of that same block, block nine, that goes from there to there. So the two endpoints are in yellow, which means our elimination candidate is going to be right there in row three, column four. And you can eliminate that four just like that. Okay, but we're going to leave it in there for now and we're going to draw the chain. We've got a strong link from there to there and we have a strong link from there to there. And here is your weak link in between. Okay, so there is your two string kite. Now I just realized that in the hand drawn diagrams earlier on, when I drew those weak links, they were always in the extremities of the block, like from the farthest corner to the other farthest corner. But those two candidates in the weak link, like you see here, they don't have to be in the farthest corners. It can be any diagonal. 
The only stipulation is those candidates can't be in the same row or the same column. Otherwise, it would negate one of the strong links and you would not have a two string kite. So that diagonal weak link can be any shape as you will see in the next few examples. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, here, let's take a look at candidate eight. And we've got a strong link from here to here. And we've got another strong link from here to here. Both strong links are coming out of block eight and they lead to these two yellow eights, which are the endpoints of our chain. And that means our elimination candidate is going to be right here in row two, column nine, because that eight that's colored red now can see both of those yellow eights, which are the endpoints, and you can eliminate it like that. So here is the chain. We've got one strong link there, and we've got one strong link there, and then we've got our weak link in between those two. So that is a real true looking two string kite because you've got your real kite shape here. I'll draw it for you, as you can see. So that looks like kind of like a kite, doesn't it? So there's the head of the kite up there and the tail down here. So the candidate in row two, column nine is false because of that chain. And as you can see, the diagonal here, not only is it from one extreme end of the block to the other, but it is also a strong link, which means it is a surrogate weak link. The middle link of a turbo fish or a two string kite can be weak or strong and it works just the same. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, let's take a look at candidate one. And in column nine, we've got a strong link from there to there. And in row five, we've got a strong link from there to there. Those are two conjugate pairs. They're connected by a diagonal weak link in block six. Okay, so that means our elimination cell is going to be up here, in row one, column two, because that one can see both of those yellow ones. So the one in row one, column two must be false. Okay, but we'll put it back in there. And as always, we're gonna draw the chain. We've got a strong link here, and we've got a strong link there, and we have a weak link in between on a diagonal. There is your two string kite that allows for that one elimination in row one, column two. All right, next one. All right, on candidate two, we've got a strong link from here to here, and we've got a strong link from here to here. Those are two conjugate pairs that crisscross, and the tail end is here in block seven. So that means we can eliminate the candidate that can see both endpoints, and that is going to be right there. That candidate two is false. Okay, we'll put it back in. So let's draw the chain. We've got a strong link here, and we've got a strong link there, and they are connected by a weak link that lies entirely within block seven. So the red colored two in row three is false. All right, next one. All right, here, let's take a look at candidate nine, and we've got a strong link from that nine to that one, and we've got a real short strong link from that nine to that one. So this is a real tight one and it still works. The elimination nine will be right here in row nine, column six, because it can see both of those yellow nines. So let's draw the chain and you've got one strong link there, one strong link there, and your weak link is now kind of on a cockeyed angle but that still works as long as it's on a diagonal and those two blue colored candidates are not in the same row or the same column. This is going to work and it will allow you to eliminate that nine in row nine, column six. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, here on candidate seven, we have a strong link from here to here and we've got a strong link from here to here. The two conjugate pairs connect in block one so that means our elimination candidate is going to be right there because that can see both of the yellow cells. The red seven in row five, column six, can see both of the endpoints, therefore it is false and can be eliminated. So let's draw the chain. There's one strong link and there's another strong link and here is your weak link in between. There is a two string kite. All right, next one. All right, here in this diagram, let's take a look at candidate two, and we've got a strong link in row two, and we've got a strong link in column four. 
and they connect in block two, and that means our elimination candidate is going to be in row six, column three. That two cannot be true. It must be false because it can see both of the endpoints. So let's again draw the chain. There's a strong link here and a strong link here and the weak link in between, which negates the candidate two in row six, column three. All right, next. All right, here on candidate five, we've got another tight one. We've got a strong link in column one, and we've got another strong link in row two, and they connect in block one. So the elimination candidate is going to be right here in row four, column four, which is the same row and column as the two endpoints. And let's draw the chain real quick. Here's a strong link, and here's the other strong link. And in between, we have this weak link, which is actually a surrogate weak link because it's a strong link, but we're using it as a weak link here in block one. And candidate five and row four, column four is false. All right, next. Okay, here on candidate six, we've got another tight one. And we've got a strong link there in column four, and we've got a short strong link in row six over there. There are the two conjugate pairs that connect in block five, and our elimination candidate is going to be in row eight, column three, the same row and column as the two yellow sixes. So that candidate six will be false because it can see both the endpoints. And once again, let's draw the chain. Your first strong link is here, and the second strong link is here, and the connecting link is here in block five. So there is your two string kite. The candidate six in row eight, column three is false. And I think that's gonna do it for today. I think that's enough examples. So let's go back outside and finish up for today. Thanks for watching. To find a two string kite, just look for two perpendicular conjugate pairs, one in a column and one in a row that crisscross or connect within a block. And as you know, the middle link or the connecting link within the block can be weak or strong. And even though a two string kite can only produce one elimination at a time, that one move can sometimes unlock the whole puzzle. So you should always be on the lookout for them because they are very common. In the next video, video number 16, we will discuss the third type of these simple three link X chains, which are called skyscrapers. And even though they look kind of simple at first, they are sometimes very hard to see, but I'll do my best to train your eyes so that you will never miss one. And then in video number 16A, we will review turbofish, two string kites and skyscrapers and look at many more examples of each one along with other insights and tips that may pop up along the way. Remember, if you want to become a Sudoku master, you cannot look at enough examples. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Until then, be well and be happy.